Who that to the who that nation? Welcome to the Dome Patrol podcast, your podcast for the New Orleans Saints here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and welcome to the cookout. This is a cookout episode of the Dome Patrol podcast because the Saints were cooking today and the results, I have to eat some crow. There's some crow I'm going to have to eat today. And we're going to get to it, and I'm proudly going to finish my – I'm going to scrape the plate. I'm proudly going to do it <laughs> today. The New Orleans Saints took on the Dallas Cowboys in Arlington, Texas, where the Cowboys get mollywopped by our New Orleans Saints by the score of 44-19. to 19. And let me just tell you, from somebody who sat there and watched every play of that game, that score does not reflect – what that game that was a butt kicking i i would go as far as to say that this was probably a more impressive win than it was in week two versus carolina not not because of the opponent but the way the execution of this game this felt worse <laughs> it just felt worse one i guess you can say the opponent because Everybody, I mean, I don't know if you watch the pregame shows on Fox and ESPN and all these other shows. Man, Dallas, Dallas was a game away from the Super Bowl. The way they made it sound like the Dallas Cowboys were the team to beat in the entire NFL, not just the NFC, and let alone this weekend versus the Saints. I mean, Dallas was the team. So I'm like, oh, my God. And you all know. If you wish, listen to the preview episode of this uh, 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 game here on the Dome Patrol podcast, I picked Dallas to win the game, which is some of the crow I'm going to have to eat. I picked them to win because I'm looking at the talent pool and how Dallas plays at home, and it was just a lot of factors that went into it. But I felt Dallas would win the game. Well, I was wrong. The New Orleans Saints... <laughs> Off of Alvin Kamara's back, who scored four touchdowns today. I mean, he he was amazing. And let's let's put this in perspective. One of the factors that I didn't mention on the pre uh, or the preview show was the fact that Alvin Kamara, when he goes up against Mike Zimmer, and Mike Zimmer was the former head coach of the Minnesota Vikings a few years back. The last time Alvin Kamara went up against a Mike Zimmer defense, he scored six touchdowns. Y'all remember Christmas Day? I think it was 2020. It was when Alvin Kamara just went off. That's when he had the the green and uh, was it green and blue or whatever shoes he had. But he he went off. He scored six touchdowns. Once again, he comes up against Mike Zimmer's defense here in Dallas, and he scores. Four touchdowns. It, I don't know what it is, but he he has this team, this defense figured out. Uh, but also, some more crow that I have to eat. Derek Carr, man. Derek Carr was near perfect today. Uh, he did throw one intercepts, but uh, interception, but that wasn't on him. That was not his fault. It actually hit uh, uh, Chris Olave's hand. But I, I don't even blame neither one of those guys because I don't understand why we were throwing at that point in the game. It was – we were far ahead of the Cowboys. I think this that was in the fourth quarter when he threw that interception. Uh, but it didn't hurt us because the very next play, uh, Dak Prescott threw an interception himself. So the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. <laughs> so that was that. Uh, so uh, Derek Carr, these last two weeks, I can clearly say, has been phenomenal. He has been great. Um in this Saints uniform, in this offense, has, I mean, he looked like the best quarterback in the league right now playing, honestly. And I'm not, you know, leaping out the window saying he's going to be the MVP and all this. I'm not saying all that. Just looking at how he's playing these two weeks, he looks great. Um, And that's how we're going to play it this year. We're going to go week to week. We're not going to look ahead. We're not going to look past Philly, we're not going to look past Atlanta and all that. We, we're going week to week, and as it stands right now, this dude is awesome. 
<laughs> he is playing amazing. Uh, it was the Saints' second overwhelming victory uh, to start the season. And the first team offense scored on 15 consecutive possessions before punting in the fourth quarter today. 15 consecutive possessions. Put that in perspective, Pete. The Saints only punted the ball once in the last two weeks. The Saints have scored a grand total of 91 points this year. Two games in, they have scored 91 points. On the flip side of that, the defense has only allowed 29 points so far this season. That is crazy. And to kind of put that in perspective, the Saints have scored. They only gave, they've only given up in two games total 29 points. In both games, Saints have scored over 30 points in the first half of each of those games. This is a special team right now. I don't know if the wheel is going to fall off. I don't know if the Saints are going to go on a 10-game losing streak. I really don't care. Right now, I am super ecstatic about this team. I was trying to hold back expectations. And I really don't have expectations. I'm not streaming Super Bowl. I'm not going (laughs) that far. Uh, But this is a special squad, man. The way this team is playing, the way this offense is clicking, it is special. I haven't seen, and I know this is going to be blast for me for a lot of Saints fans. But I haven't seen the de- uh, offense look this good even when uh, uh, Sean Payton was here. Let's be honest. Sean Payton didn't have these people scoring 40-something points a game. And it looks like they're not going to stop uh, scoring on t- uh, 15 straight possessions. Uh, no, I, you never saw that with Sean Payton's offense. Let's be honest. Let's be real. <laughs> and that's with Drew Brees and all. This is a different team. A very different team that I didn't see coming, and the Dallas Cowboys certainly didn't see coming <laughs> this uh, uh, this Sunday. Uh, New Orleans ended Dallas' 16-game home winning streak in Jerry World. This is a one of the longest home stands in the NFL. The Saints put the kibosh on that. Uh, Alvin Kamara, the team's all-time leading rusher in touchdowns, Scored four touchdowns today. Four of them rushing a four-yarder, a 12-yarder, and a seven-yard touchdown. And he had one receiving touchdown on a beautifully called screenplay that, I mean, caught Dallas defense sleeping of a 57-yard screen pass. It was beautifully called. Um, He had 12 carries for 115 yards today, two receptions for 65 yards. Kamara is the only player in Saints history to score four touchdowns in a game twice, and he passes 6,000 yards rushing for his career. Derek Carr completed his first passes, which included the 70-yard strike to Rashid Shaheed for a touchdown and the screen pass to Kamara, and the Saints never looked back. The Saints scored first. And it was old. You actually felt it. I, I went and watched it, uh, watched the game with a couple of friends of mine. And we were sitting in there, and the friends of mine, they were Cowboys fans, of course. So I was uh, kind of behind enemies, enemy lines, but it's all good. Because it, once <laughs> Shadid scored that touchdown, it took all the air out of the room. I, I think everybody knew at that point this game was over. You just felt it. It, it, you just felt it, and it never stopped. It was a it was a steamroller from that point on. Uh, Derek Carr added with a one yard touchdown sneak from the, from the one yard line, and uh, when he went to dancing doing the Michael Jackson, I was like, yeah, they got the they got the mojo going. Uh, Derek Carr he ended the game eleven for sixteen, two hundred and forty three yards, uh, with a quarterback rating of one twenty. Five. Shadid had four receptions for 94 yard, or 96 yards, I should say, and a touchdown. Uh, Chris Olave, he had four catches for 81 yards, and that was good to see because he was quiet last week against Carolina. And it wasn't because he had a bad performance. It, we didn't need to go to him. 
in that game. <laughs> he was he was just the odd man out. But uh, this week he was more involved uh, with the four catches. And on defense, Paulson Adebo, uh he had an interception today. Uh, Brian Bercy, who was questionable during a week of practice to play in this game, he had a strip sack. And Carl Grandison had a sack and a half. He shared it with Chase Young today. The defense also stopped the Dallas Cowboys offense twice on fourth down attempts. It, it was just an all-around butt kicking for, <laughs> that was applied to the Cowgirls today. There were some casualties. Uh, uh, Rod receiver Cedric Wilson, he left the game. Uh, Teron Matthew left the game. And Taysom Hill ended up leaving the game for the Saints. But Teron Matthew did return to the field. And it's a good thing because he made an interception in the fourth quarter. <laughs> and that was his 34th career interception. And so I think he's going to be all right. I don't think the other two injuries were serious. I, I, I think if the game was kind of competitive, they probably could have played. But at that point, it really made no sense to put him back in the game and risking uh, further injury to those players. Uh, next week, the Saints will host, finally host, the Philadelphia Eagles in the dome. And it feels good because, man, we it seems like every time we played the Eagles, we had to go to Philly, and finally we get them in the dome. And that's a good thing. Um, Philadelphia, they're 1-0 right now. They play Atlanta on Monday night football. Uh, we'll be cheering for them on Monday night, but after that, it's, uh, it's all hate. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, uh, going around the rest of the NFC South, as I said, uh, Atlanta plays on Monday night. Uh, but uh, Green Bay, not Green Bay, Tampa Bay won their game today against Detroit, which was kind of a shocker. I, I really had Detroit winning that game. And, uh, of course, Carolina lost again. And so that's how it stands right now. We are 2-0 and along with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who I always felt was going to be our toughest competition in this division, but everybody and their grandmother picked Atlanta, and I know it's early yet, but I'm just not sold on Atlanta. Uh, but that's besides the point. Let's break down the statistics of the game. Um, starting with the passing, our leading passer today was, of course, Derek Carr. He was 11 for 16, 243 yards passing. Two touchdowns, one interception. He was sacked one time today. Uh, for the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott, he was 27 for 39, 293 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. He was sacked three times today. For the rushing yardage, Alvin Kamara, <laughs> 20 carries, 115 yards, three rushing touchdowns. For the Dallas Cowboys, their leading rusher was Rico Dowd. Dowit, I don't forgot how to pronounce his name. <laughs> Excuse me, but he had seven carries for 30 yards. Uh, our leading receiver for the New Orleans Saints was Rashid Shaheed. He had four catches for 96 yards and a touchdown. For the Dallas Cowboys, it was C.D. Lamb. Four catches for 90 yards and a touchdown. Leading tackler on defense was Elante Taylor for the New Orleans Saints with nine total tackles. For the Dallas Cowboys, their leading tackler was Eric Kendricks with eight total tackles. Moving over to team stats, starting with first downs, Saints had 24 first downs to Dallas Cowboys, 20. Uh, third down efficiency, Saints were five for eight. Dallas was six for 13. On fourth down, Saints never went for it on fourth. Uh, Cowboys went for it on fourth three times and only converted once total plays saints had 56 total plays cowboys had 66 total plays uh total yardage saints had 432 total yards to the cowboys 353 both teams had 10 drives apiece yards per play saints had 7.7 yards per play to the dallas cowboys 5.3 seven point Seven yards per play against this defense, against the Dallas defense that I've been told is one of the best in the league. I believe they are one of the best in the league. You know, you have Micah Parsons. You have uh, uh, 
uh, Demarcus Lawrence and uh, Kendricks, and you have this stouted uh, secondary with uh, Diggs, and you know, I'm thinking like, man, it's going to be rough sledding for the Saints. Nope, seven point seven yards of play. <laughs> it was it was amazing. Uh, passing yardage, Saints had two hundred and forty-two passing yards to the Dallas Cowboys two hundred and eighty-five. Um, rushing yardage, Saints had one hundred and ninety yards rushing today to the Dallas Cowboys. You ready? Sixty-eight. They couldn't do anything on the ground. Absolutely nothing on the ground. Uh, Saints, they ran the ball, I think it was uh, 4.9 yards a rush. That is excellent. <laughs> that is uh, phenomenal. And the Saints were just lights out, man. They were lights out on the ground. And quite honestly, that was the only way you was going to beat this Dallas defense. You had to neutralize Michael Parsons. You had to neutralize uh, Demarcus Lawrence because those are pass rushers. They, they're they not known for stopping the run, but they can stop the run. They can slow up the run, but you got to attack them. You have to keep them honest, and that was the best course of action. They were just running along that black backside. You know what I'm saying? They were running plays along the backside. They made the play action work. They put people in motion just to move the linebackers and come around that backside. It was Perfect game plan. Um, in the red zone, the New Orleans Saints were four for five in the red zone to the Dallas Cowboys, 0 for three. They did nothing in the red zone. Penalties today were much better than last week's uh, penalties. Uh, Saints only had five penalties for 40 yards. Cowboys, four penalties for 26 yards. Uh, turnovers, Saints had the one turnover, the interception. Uh, drawn late in the game. Uh, Cowboys had two, and it should have been three. Uh, there was that script sack that bounced on the ground. It felt like for five minutes they were trying to scoop it and score instead of just landing on the ball, you know, getting on top of the ball uh, that Dallas was able to recover. Uh, but it should have been three, but it is what it is. Uh, time of possession, the New Orleans Saints had the ball for 30 minutes and 31 seconds. Dallas had the ball for 29 minutes. In 29 seconds. This was uh, unexpected. I did not see this coming. I don't think anyone saw this coming. Dennis Allen's mother didn't see this coming. Nobody saw this butt kicking coming. I I am so happy. I am so happy that I was wrong. I've never been happier to be wrong in my life. <laughs> you have no earthly idea. Uh, the joy of sitting across from Cowboys fans while watching this game in real time, to see the look on their faces, the joy <laughs> that came over me is words cannot express. I, I am impressed with Dennis Allen. I am impressed with how he constructed this team. Like I said, this is the e e crow episode of the Dawn Patrol podcast. I'm going to give the devil his due. This is phenomenal the way this team is structured. I'm going to give props to, De um, well, I already gave it to Dennis Allen, to Derek Carr. As much as I was ready to run him out of town, he looks great. Now, could that change next week for both of these gentlemen? Yes, it could change next week. <laughs> Uh, he, he very well could, but right now, today, September the, what's today, September the 15th, I am all in on these two gentlemen. They have proven that they are willing to change because they have changed. Derek Carr has changed. This isn't the same Derek Carr. This isn't the same Dennis Allen. This isn't the same New Orleans Saints football team that we have painfully watched for the last three years. This is a different squad, a more competent squad. They look like they are having fun out there. They're, they look like they are prepared for anything. It, this is an amazing transformation of a team from last season to this season. I did not see this coming. Another player who I, I'm eating crow about, 
Trevor Penning. I, I got to give him his due. The dude is uh doing his job. He is truly doing his job. Yeah, is he getting help on that side? Especially against Mike. I don't care who was on that side. Ryan Ramchek in his prime would have needed help against uh Michael Parsons. Let's be honest. You know, <laughs> let's be real, people. But he did an awesome job. This offensive line as a whole, which we went into this season with the biggest question marks about this O-line, have been doing a phenomenal job these last two weeks. Uh, it was kind of pushed to the side last week because we were going against the Carolina Panthers. Now you go up against a playoff quality team. Let's, this was the real test. And they passed it with flying colors. Speaking of which, let's give our grades for the day. Our grade system goes like this. If this is your first time listening to the Dawn Patrol podcast, if it is, welcome to the show. I hope that you continue to check out the show every week. Uh, but this is how it goes. I grade all four units of the New Orleans Saints. Offense, defense, special teams, and coaching. Round it all up and come up with an overall grade for the week two performance against the Dallas Cowboys. Starting with the offense, uh, Derek Carr looked great. Uh, we had the one interception that really wasn't his fault. It bounced off of the player's hand, off of Chris Olave's hand, into the uh, Dallas Cowboys defender's hand. And so I really don't give him that uh, ding him on that. That's more of a coaching decision because we shouldn't have been throwing in that position, in my humble opinion. They, there shouldn't have been a pass thrown in that at that point of the game but whatever that's where it was they get an a minus today they looked for my i mean and for a portion of this game the saints did whatever they wanted to do run cool let's get about six yards on the ground pass cool let's go let's go deep let's dink and dunk let's, let's run this string whatever they wanted to do they did it there was no point offensively where the Saints looked like they were in trouble, like they had to uh, think on the fly how we were going to convert on this third down. I don't think they were in third and long the entire game, if if memory serves. I mean, they were clicking. Yes, offense gets an A-. minus. Uh, defense, defense gets a B plus, and the reason it's kind of low, there were some plays there, and just like last week, it was just kind of hidden because of uh, Bryce Young being under duress the entire game. Uh, but I knew once they went against a more competent quarterback, it was going to kind of rear his ugly head. Uh, the secondary was kind of lacking. Now, I know we were missing Marshawn Lattimore in this game, but it, yet and still, there were portions of the game where the defense – was kind of lagging in the secondary. Uh, that touchdown by C.D. Lamb, some whiff tackles. I don't know what was going on on that play. I really don't know what they were doing on that play. Um, there was a play, I think, in the second quarter where it was a wide, res wide receiver screen pass that should have been blown up in the backfield. The defense was called correctly, but the tackle wasn't made, and it was – uh, third down conversion or it, it probably was a second down I can't re remember uh, off the top of my head but uh, that should have been blown up and it wasn't uh, and it was a couple of plays like that where the defense didn't wrap up and I, I've been fighting with this for a while it, this just didn't start uh, that de the defense does that at times like they whiff on tackles and I don't understand why the play is right the defensive uh, uh, uh Play calling was correct. They just didn't execute it. So there was a couple of plays like that. But overall, it was kind of bend, don't break. They forced a lot of field goals uh, because it was it could have went tit for tat uh, if if the Saints defense hadn't buckled down and uh, forced them into field goal situations. So uh, overall, I think it was a good performance, but I give it a B plus. Special teams. Special teams gets a A minus, and they get the A minus. They 
that extra point block, which I, you know, I, I mean, but it was an extra point block. <laughs> that should be that should be textbook, but it didn't uh, uh, go through. But overall, it was pretty decent. A special special teams overall. On to coaching. Coaching gets an A minus. Uh, really good game plan. Uh, coaches had the team prepared, had their players prepared today, and they they went out there and just wipe the floor with the Cowboys. It, it was some, I do have a gripe. Like I said, that pass that was interception, intercepted, if I could talk. Um, it was, it didn't need to be called at that point. We were running the ball pretty decent. Actually, we were running the ball fairly well. Um, it was no reason to throw the ball. Uh, you know, we trying to milk the clock and get out of there with a win, but I, I guess they were trying to go for the gusto and rip the heart out, but it, at, po- at times, it seems like they were kind of inconsistent at the end. Do we want to keep our foot on their neck or kind of, you know, take the foot off the gas? It, it was it was a little back and forth there. Me, personally, I'm more of a keep your foot on the neck type of guy. You know, <laughs> I know it's going to be, oh, you're running up the score on them or whatever. I, I, look, it's football. You know, you don't want them to score, stop them. It, that's just that. Now, if the roles were reversed, I, nobody would pay pity on you. Uh, they, they would not. It, it's the truth. Uh, but uh, other than that, uh, perfect game plan, and it was executed perfectly. Rounding it all up, the New Orleans Saints performance against the Dallas Cowboys in week two in Dallas, they get an A-. minus. Awesome performance. Probably better if you sit down and think about it. This was better than what they did against the uh, Carolina Panthers. Because everybody figured it was just the Carolina Panthers. They're not going to do it again. They did it again. And honestly, this score does not reflect that butt whooping. I'm I'm honest. It could have been worse. It should have been worse. (laughs) But, you know, the Saints only scored. They scored 44 points in this game. Think about it now. The Saints scored 44 points in this game, yet they only, only nine of it was scored in the second half. The majority of it was in the first half. Just imagine if they would have kept their foot on the gas and did what they did in the first half into the second half, they probably would have put up an 80-burger on these people, man. <laughs> they were destroying these people. At, it was points in this game when we were sitting there at Buffalo Wild Wings watching the game. At, and these were that Cowboys fans saying this. Man, we cannot stop these people at all. Even even when <laughs> even when they scored that touchdown with uh, C. D. Lamb, they were like, "Man, we can't stop these people. We, we there's no way to stop these people. They, they, <laughs> our defense can't figure it out. How do you adjust?" And I'm like, "Man, I don't. It, it was so bad. I was trying to help them. I was like, you know what? It was maybe if they start." Uh, 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 stopping the run, doing something to stop the run. But then I'm like, well, no, you can't do that because we're eating y'all up passing. I mean, it was nothing you could do. <laughs> there is really no answer to this uh, uh, equation known as the New Orleans Saints as far as the Dallas Cowboys are concerned. Uh, MVPs today. Our MVPs, I give out MVPs after every performance, uh, after every game, I should say to the best performance of the defense and the offense. Today, offensive MVP in week two goes to Alvin Kamara. Four touchdowns today. Four. Three rushing, one receiving. He looked phenomenal. Uh, defensively, the whole defense gets it. Uh, did, nobody um, stood out as for, uh, performance-wise, uh, but – Everybody did their job. So defensively, the whole defense gets the game ball today. Uh, Next week, the New Orleans Saints return home to take on the Philadelphia Eagles, 12 noon. Uh, I am excited for that game because now the expectations are starting to get higher. Uh, So it's kind of scarier now. It's, It's a little scarier now because... You start questioning, are the Saints for real now? We're two weeks in. Are the Saints for real? And I don't know, man. I I can't I can't not say they aren't. They are truly a good team. This is two weeks. 
we wanted consistency. These are two weeks in a row you didn't put 40 burgers on teams. And so, <laughs> I mean, and it's also two weeks in a row you haven't allowed 20 points from the opponent. And so if you got that going, if you got a team, I mean, I'm not looking for 40. If you can put up 28 points, you know, especially at home, if you can put up 28 points and your defense can hold a team under 20, you're in good shape going forward. So next week is a big test uh, as well. You know, actually these next, I'll say three games is a big test. You know, if we can get out of this, and this is the hardest part of the schedule, people. Let's not let's not forget about that. We're in the hardest part of our schedule this season. If we can get through the next four weeks, and I hate looking ahead, I, I can't stand it. But I'm just playing devil's advocate here. If if we can get out of these next four weeks and just split it, we're in excellent shape, excellent shape. Uh, but right now, let's just revel in this. Let's enjoy this, that we beat the Cowgirls. Not only beat them, we destroyed these people. <laughs> we destroyed the Dallas Cowboys. I don't want to hear nothing else from a Cowboys fan this season. I, it, keep your mouth shut. Just zip it. Zip, 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 zip it. And so, uh, great victory. Once again, just to recap, the New Orleans Saints are now 2-0 and on the season after defeating the the Dallas Cowboys by the score of 44 to 19. I would love to know what are your thoughts of the Saints so far this season. Are you super excited by this victory? Were you kind of on the fence after we defeated the Carolina Panthers in dominating fashion? You wanted to see them against a better team. Well, here's the better team. So I would love to know your thoughts on this squad. You can email the show kbradiopodcast at gmail.com you can also search for the show on all social media platforms and leave a comment if you will just search for the kb radio network also look us up on youtube subscribe to the kb radio network channel and like this video if you don't mind don't forget about the five stars the reviews and sharing this show if you're listening on apple podcast spotify iHeartRadio, radio wherever you are currently listening to the Dome Patrol podcast here on the KB Radio Network. Everybody, thank you for joining me for this recap of the Saints' dominating performance against the Dallas Cowboys. Don't forget, we'll be back later on this week as we preview the Saints versus the Eagles in week three. Until then, I'm going to be screaming every day from the mountaintops, Who that? (laughs) 